Good, mo good afternoon, fellow e waters. This is Shanti Swami Street coming to you from London. Shanti Swami Street of English with a Twist. How are you, everyone? We're live. It's 3 p.m., 23rd of August, Wednesday. How are you all doing? And I hope everyone's coming live. I can start seeing people coming on. So, welcome. We are here at Lesson 36 of Wednesdays with Yvonne. Uh, so, great. So, we are going to be talking today about storytelling. Hi, Hala. How are you? And yes, so st I'm going to swipe. According to, I get to see who are the live viewers. So, it's very exciting. I get to see who's live. And let me, as I always do, refresh my... Facebook page. So lesson 36. Hello Hala, lovely to see you here again. Hope my regulars are coming in as you, you know, put aside some time to zoom into this lesson. So we're going to be talking about storytelling as I said and very importantly storytelling in business because you might be saying to me but Shanti what has storytelling got to do with business? And my answer would be to you is a lot. So follow this class and we'll, I will show you how to tell a good story and captivate your listeners as you're telling your story. Right, before I start, as always, I remind you, if you haven't signed up to the eWord community, don't forget to do it right this minute or straight after this class and join the eWord community. It's growing very fast and I'm really delighted to see that. And you will then get access to all the bonuses that I offer you, which is a free e-guide on the steps to become an effective communicator in business and also business idiom videos and the, the weekly lessons that I deliver every Friday directly into your inbox, which are audio blogs. So you get to listen and read at the same time. So don't forget to sign up to that. That'd be great and join the eWatt community. Okay, fellows, don't forget to tell me where you're from, who you are, and we'll get cracking. Get cracking. Nice idiom. idiom. I think if you've been following me on Facebook, you'll have seen that business idiom video I did. Get cracking, which is to get started on today's lesson. So let me scroll down to see who is that. Rosie's just come in. Thank you so much. Bouquet of roses. Thank you. I love my roses. Gabriela, hi. Lovely to see you. You couldn't make last week, but I'm glad you joined in. Hala, lovely to see you again, as we said. So yeah, I will keep this tuned so I can see the comments box on my screen. Stories. What's your story? What are stories? I mean, you know, when we think about stories, Throughout history, we stories have been an important part of human beings. If you think about the early civilizations, the way traditions were communicated to the different generations, it was through storytelling. And who doesn't love stories? As a child, did you grow up with stories? Did your parents tell you stories uh, before going to bed? So you would have a bedtime story. Uh, and you know just before going to bed or maybe you had relatives and family who would tell you stories or perhaps you come from a culture that is where storytelling is very important people gather around after a good meal and tell each other stories I don't know about you but you know maybe you do hi cherry as I'm going in I'll be saying hello to people so stories are incredibly important. Why? Because one, we, we can share traditions and send them down the generations. Uh, stories are great for a way of creating a sense of community, a sense of belonging, a sense of a way for people to share their experiences and share what has worked for them, what hasn't worked for them. So it's a great way of seeing what what they, um, you know, sharing their, you know, that sort of uh, information with each other. So it makes you feel the sense of belonging, sense of a community. It also allows you to share information and, you know, your experiences. So, you know, maybe if you've had a successful, a success story, you want to share it with people. If you've had a story 
or failure and then success, you want to share it. We all have that. So I'd love to know what your stories are. What are your stories? Um, stories can be sad. Stories can be funny. Stories can be inspiring. And, you know, we live through our stories. In a day, if you think about how many stories you tell each other, uh, it would be interesting to know. When were, what was the last story you heard? What was the last story you heard that resonated with you? When I mean resonated, it means you identified with that story. It told you something. It left you with something impressionable. And you thought, I love that story. I want to know more about it. What is it all about? So, you know, and isn't it great when you read a good book or when you watch a good film or when you go to a theater and you watch a good play? It's all about storytelling. It's making us, you know, it's giving, sending a message. And uh, so, you know, very important part. Would you agree? Tell me, thumbs up if you agree about storytelling. It's an important part of our society, of our community, wherever we are, how small, how big. In this class, what I wanted to do is to share with you how we can use stories in business. Because many people say to, us, say to me, well, what has stories got to do in business? And when would you tell a story? So in business, when would you tell a story? Could you share this with me in your comments box? What stories could you, could you do? Hala, you're saying in your elementary class, only in English classes, we can hear stories. Hello, Vasiliki. Oh, it's been such a long time. I haven't seen you. Welcome back. So thinking about business, thinking about where you do uh, business, where, do you, where would you tell a story? How would you tell a story? In what situation? What does, where do situations like t storytelling help? So do let me know in the comments box. For example, um, presentations. When you're giving a presentation, a business presentation, you might, how would you engage your audience? A great way of engaging your audience is to tell a story. Maybe it's telling a story about how you developed a product or the history of your company or the history of your success or the origins of a company or the product. And we want to build that story. Why? Because a story will engage your audience a story allows that person, your audience, to imagine a scenario, a situation, and it brings them in to what you're trying to tell them. So stories are powerful. Stories are powerful in business. Maybe you're even having a meeting. Maybe you're into. Maybe you're having a difficult meeting with a colleague or a an employee. And maybe you want to try and inspire them, so maybe you tell them a story. So you, 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 you give them a story so that they can understand the message you want to give. Stories are far more powerful than just giving people information. What Do you agree with that? Would you agree? You know, think about the last presentation you heard, presentation you listened to, presentation you attended that was memorable for you. What was the presenter like? Did they just give you a lot of information and that's it? Or did they create a story, a picture for you that drew you in? If you think about any of you, uh, so Vasily Key, um, you're saying stories, examples we give in order to persuade, understand, get involved and take a role. When you say take a role, you mean what? You're getting involved. Sometimes when Ahala you're saying this, it's a common place to hear a lot of inspired, successful stories. Yes, because why do you want to hear it? You want to hear stories are examples of what other people have done. So that could, be, could inspire you. You know, this is my story. Maybe you're going through an illness 
maybe you're going through hard times if someone else shares their story with you maybe they went through a similar experience that could give you comfort that could give you um, uh, inspiration to think okay if they did this and they succeeded or they they overcame a problem then I can do so so it's always good it's engaging it's sharing because we don't live on an island we all live together and that's a great way of doing it so we've all agreed that stories can be very powerful Oh, Vasiliki, you're saying take a role in it. Find your own part in an example in a story. Stories help us see that we're not alone. Exactly. Uh, you know, let, let me give you an example for it. For me, you know, building my business, English with a Twist, has been a very um, wonderful road of discovery about myself, my weaknesses, my strengths. But... It would be very lonely if I did this on my own. And often I need to, you know, and, and when you're doing this on your own, sometimes you can think, oh, I'm a failure. I can't do this. It's really difficult. Or maybe I'm just not cut out for it. Maybe I'm too old to start, or maybe I should just you not know, bother. And then you listen to someone else, or you read their story, or you hear them, and you think, wow, they had similar problems as me they went through the same thing and then they came out of it well if they can do it then I can do it and it inspires you to do it um, you hear a lot of success stories in business don't we we all like to hear success stories but we often forget that for every successful entrepreneur they've had a lot of failures along the way but we forget to hear that so it's nice every now and again to hear from these people to tell us where they failed what happened what happened at that point? How did they, they change their lives to then do something different? Similarly with you as business English learners, you're learning English to communicate better, more effectively, more successfully in business. There are going to be moments when you feel very frustrated and you think to yourself, really, I'm not progressing. This is terrible. I can't do it. And so it's a very important to share your experiences with other learners not just teachers or saying well what are your experiences learning a language similarly with teachers sharing it with your learners maybe you've learned another language share it with your learners to say this is my journey this is what happened yeah it was difficult it was tough now this is how i did it this is what i did now some things will work for you other things won't and so that is great uh, you know that sharing um, situations with people so fine so we will you know sh stories make us feel part of a community they they inspire us they 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 don't they they help us feel that we're not on our own we're not alone it's not just me it's not only about me but there are other people who are in a similar situation now if we take it now into a situation of business and we're going to tell a story now, there are some fantastic storytellers on there, out there. Think of who is your most successful storyteller in your eyes, in your, in your opinion. You know, take, for example, Harry Potter's author, J.K. Rowling. What a great, fantastic storyteller. To be able to tell a story, you know, that keeps you engaged, that makes you want to know more. You know, it's amazing, isn't it? You think, wow, what talent. Well, we don't... We can't all aspire to be J.K. Rowling, but we can in our own small way tell stories, and we all do. But what does a story need to be successful, to engage our audience, to engage the person who's listening to us? It needs to have structure. A story needs a structure. And when I say a structure, I'm talking about a beginning and an ending. And a structure that helps you to also captivate your audience it, it it gives your audience warning about what you're about to tell them and it keeps them hanging they go oh, really how oh wow so and it also tells them that you're about to tell them a story if you see what i mean uh vasiliki is saying yes andrew wright what a great person hi roberto hi from malaysia 
Exactly, Vasiliki is saying, isn't everything we do a story? From giving a cooking recipe to guiding someone on how to establish something. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Everything we do is a story, isn't it? So if I'm going to tell you, look, okay, so, um, you know, this morning I did this and then I was, you know, so, you know, this is what happened. You see, I went to, to the shops and at the shops, uh, this is what happened. I met so-and-so and then this happened and then that happened. And then finally we discussed it and then I left. That's a story. Every day we're telling stories. But let's take it... Now, in English, you know, you might be very good at telling your stories in your own language and then you think, yeah, but how do I tell a story in English? You know, then I get confused, my vocabulary. So having a structure to your story can guide you in developing that, that storyline. And this is what I want to do with this class is developing that story. How do you have that structure? So in your mind, let me ask you here, and if you can share that in the chat box, what structure do you need for a story? What does a story need to have to be complete? So if you could just take a minute to share in the chat box what you think a good story needs. I'll wait. Yes, the structure is the same regardless of your first language. Yes. It's the same. You'll have a similar structure. So what is the structure we need in a, in, to tell a story? You know, because there is, a, there, is a, there is a procedure, isn't there? There is a logical sequence to a story, if it's told well. So are we going to start with one? The first one would be what? You are... Rosie, you're saying it's an interesting subject, interesting subject in terms of what, the, 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 sub, the, the lesson? Or are you telling me about the, the story you want to tell has to be of an interesting subject? So what's your start? What are you going to start with, with your story? You're going to start with your introduction. Now, introduction. You're not giving a presentation to say, but what would your, introdu what your introduction, in, what does it serve? What purpose does it serve an introduction? Yeah, it gives you the background to the story and why people will find it interesting or funny. Yeah. Then we have what? So the beginning. Exactly. Ah, nice, Hala. You're saying plot and problem. So the beginning will be to explain how the story starts. Yeah, so you're going to say how the story started. Then you tell me the story itself. So the main events in order. And then you come to your conclusion. So how, and then you make a final comment about the story. Now, there are different types of stories, so I'm not going to talk about that today. But, you know, there could be some stories where you're just sharing experiences. There could be a story where you are talking about a problem and then you, you, you show what the solution is. So you create a scenario of what was the problem and then you give the scenario of the um, the solution so you know that that helps you so here I want to share with you some phrases and expressions so we're looking at introduction beginning the story which is going to be the main part and then finally the conclusion so you're telling that you've come to the end of your story great stuff so here in this class I want to share with you some expressions that you can use that would inform your re your your listener you're about to tell a story. Okay, so these are probably, you know, so the, the beginning of these sort of things. So let's say we're looking at an introduction. So you're going to do things like um, introduction. How could we start? Gabriela, you're saying, I think a good story needs to have a clear idea, a purpose, I mean, a reason to the listener that can understand and feel a part of. Yeah, okay, maybe, could, yes, exactly. So feel, yeah, and so you want to, you want to involve them. So maybe we'll start with the introduction of, you're not going to believe this, but, but what, what, what's happened? You're not going to believe this, but you know, yeah, so you could start that, couldn't you? How would you start? You're not going to believe this. <gasps> what? Oh, okay, here's the beginning of my story. Did I ever tell you about the time I was, 
Yeah? Did I ever tell you about the time I was? Hmm. So you're immediately triggering with that expression something. Oh, what? 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 No, no, I don't think. Oh, but I want to hear. Maybe you did tell me, but maybe you didn't. So did I ever tell you the time when? Don't worry, I'm going to be sharing with you this post I wrote with these expressions. So don't worry if you miss them. How about, I'll never forget the time I was in Rome visiting my friends. Yeah, I'll never forget the time. And you begin to think, okay, there's a story coming. You know, so you're, 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 you're telling someone, you're introducing them to that idea. If you've noticed people going past, <laughs> ignore them, okay? <laughs> so, introduction. You're not going to believe this. Did I ever tell you about the time I was, you know, at that meeting and this happened? No, I don't. Please tell me more. Oh, I'll never forget that time I was. Have a think. What else? How else would you start that, you know? Immediately start that I'm about to tell you a story. How could you introduce the story? So, Roberto, you're saying, I think a good story should be relatable. Could you tell me more about that? What do you mean it should be relatable? Uh, not heard of that word. Suspense, yes. So, you know, you start with that introduction. You won't believe it, but... No, will I? Will I not believe it? I will, I don't know. Uh, you're not going to believe this, but, you know, guess who I saw at the supermarket? <gasps> who? I can't, but just guess. Oh, okay, okay, what? Really? Oh, my word. Okay. The beginning. How do you start? So you start this introduction. Maybe you caught the person's attention. Now how are we going to start this? So we're going to look at, for example, maybe it's quite a few years ago. So the start of this, you know, this, the story begins. So it, start, it was a few years ago when I was studying in blah, blah, blah. And then you start telling them what you were doing. Maybe you've been talking to someone and they, and you know, you're, you're, convers con uh, you're conversing, you're having a conversation, and you go, talking of, um, of, you know, talking of um, uh, that person, um, that reminds me of the time I did this. Yeah, so talking of, so talking of um, eating in bad restaurants. That reminds me of a time I had the most awful meal I've ever had. Yeah, so talking of, so you're, you're referring to what people were talking about and then that starts your story. Now, let me tell you about this situation. Okay, yes, that's great. Or it could be something like, this was around the time, so you started your conversation. So I'll never forget the time I was at. This was around the time of, you know, you know when we were having those problems with um, getting the good suppliers, you know, you remember that time, you know that, yeah, 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 I do, I do, okay, yeah, tell me, I'm interested in this story. And you'll never guess what and where this happened, you know, and you'll never guess, really, oh, I might guess, let me know, tell me, tell me. So you'll never guess. No, but... I'm sure I can, but if you start telling me the story, maybe I'll know. So what are you doing with these introductions at the beginning? You're getting their attention. You're trying to bring them in. Listen to my wonderful story. So what are you starting with? You're not immediately starting with your story. You're using little phrases to get them into your story. So you're not going to go, I'm now going to tell you a story. No, really, I'm not interested in your story. No, but did I ever tell you... You know, sort of, it was quite a few years ago, but talking of which, that reminds me of the time I did this. Yeah, so you can pick some of these phrases and try using them when you're telling a story, as you're introducing that story. So let's say, and then you'll never guess what, or you'll never guess who I saw the other day. You'll never guess who um, has been voted um, as... Um, as prime minister in this country, or you'll never guess who uh, won um, The Apprentice. I don't know. Or you'll never guess what. Really, who? Well, I don't know. Oh, really? And then you start this story. 
you start telling a story. So that's our beginning. Now, how about when we start telling the story itself? You could use, you start telling the story. So this was a beginning. This was at the time when. And you could use expressions like, you know, you should have heard or you should have seen him. You know, you should have, so as you're telling the story, you should have seen them. You know, I don't know what they were thinking about. But, you know, this is what happened. And, you know, this is how I did it. And then to top it all. And then to top it all, this is what happened. So, and then to top it all, so to make it even, so you've told, told the story and you, you, you bring it in. Um, okay, bye, Hala, see you soon. Um, and, and, and the strange thing and the funny thing is and the stupid thing is, some people say, and the crazy thing is that he didn't even realize he wanted this. So you're using these little expressions that we can have. And then, can you imagine my surprise when? Can you imagine my surprise when I realized that he had already blah, blah, blah. So, you, 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 you know, you're creating that. that you know, and, and as you're telling that story, you're using your, your language to, you're using also your voice to bring in the, intonation and the emotion into that story you're telling. By the time I realized what had happened, it was too late. So by the time I realized our mistakes, it was too late. Oh no, really? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. So what did you do? Well, then, then, uh, you know, we, we had to m make some changes. But then, you know, then eventually we realized, you know, it was going to be better. So you're telling that story, but you're using again these little expressions. I, I hope you're following me in this in terms of, but don't worry if you're thinking, oh, it, all these expressions, these expressions are going to be in, a, in the attachment I sent to you when I um, upload this, this lesson, so don't worry. But it's just these little expressions like, you should have heard, you should have seen, or, and then to top it all. And the strange, or the funny thing, or the crazy thing was, can you imagine my surprise when I realized and by the time I'd realized what had happened. So you're, as you're telling the story, you're bringing in these expressions to make it much more emotional and passionate and bring in that passion. And you can do that also in a business scenario. You know, this doesn't have to just be telling stories um, outside a business context. And then as towards the end, as you're coming to your conclusion, you could be saying, well, anyway, to cut a long story short, Often we have that because maybe you're just telling them an anecdote. You're telling them a little story. So you think, okay, it's a very long story, but to cut a long story short, the so what happened was in the end, this happened. And so you've brought it closer. So in the end, what happened was, so in the end, what happened was, blah, blah, blah. It seems quite funny now when I tell you the story, but you know, at the time, it wasn't so funny. The problems we had just, you know, achieving that deadline was terrible. But now that I'm telling you the story, it sounds funny, but, you know, it wasn't so funny at the time. So there you go. Anyway, it all turned out well in the end, and, you know, they lived happily ever after. Okay, that's a fairy tale. Not, not everyone lives happily ever after, but you know, finally it turned out well in the end. So, you know, I'm still here. I'm still here telling the story. So it's, it's, it's fine. So these are sort of expressions you can, you know, having with your structure, you're thinking of your introduction, your beginning, your actual story, and then coming towards the end of your story. Try and bringing in these little phrases that develop your story as you're going along. And that can help you with a structure when telling a story in English. Also telling a story in your own language. If you think, um, okay, Angeliki, you're saying, we need to open the story saying something catchy. So they pay attention and listen with anticipation. Exactly, Angeliki. So how would you do that? Would you do that with your voice? Would that do that with your, 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 your facial expression? Or even with, with, with the phrases? So 
like we were saying earlier, we were, like I was saying earlier, we just you're not going to believe this, but <gasps> did I ever tell you that time I was? <gasps> okay, I'll never forget the time, you know, I was, oh, listen, I've got, I've got this wonderful story. Oh, you know, what? it's just, uh, it was so hilarious. You've got to hear it. You know, so, you know, it's just, oh, you've just got to hear it. Oh, okay. What about in a business context? What about in a business presentation? How could you show that to people? You are in a presentation or you're in a meeting and you are, you're telling, you're trying to persuade people and you go, well, you know, let me share you a story. Or this reminds me of a time when we had this important conference. We were at this particular conference. So this reminds me of the time. Oh, I've got this great story. I think this will really illustrate my point. So then you start it and then you tell your story. Yeah, but if you're, yes, if you're trying to catch someone at that moment, you're in a, in a situation of small talk, it's, it's how do you capture their attention? I've got a great story. Oh, yeah, talking of which, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, it reminds me of that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was great. Oh, yeah, you know what? And then you, and that person hopefully is going to be receptive to what you're about to tell them. So let's look at, you're telling that story. Now, if you were listening to that story, if you were listening to a story, how could you show your involvement and your active involvement in that in that story because you know isn't it nothing worse than telling a story to someone and there is no reaction coming from them that's really hard work isn't it and you have you ever had a situation where you're telling a story to an audience or to a little group and there's nothing they're not reacting they're not showing any visual facial expressions and you think oh my goodness I'm either boring them to tears or you know, I have no idea whether I'm in, you know, they're interested in this. Uh, so, you know, you need, you need, you want to, to try and capture some, some, some expressions. Now, if you are someone who's listening to a story, it would be great to encourage the storyteller. So try to encourage them by saying, expre using expressions that react to their story. So how can we do that? What words, what expressions could we use? that would encourage them to continue with their story. So let's have a look here. So here are some reaction phrases. So as you're actively listening to the story, encourage them. Because then that makes them feel, okay, that's great. I'll keep telling you my story. So you go, I'm not surprised. You know, and you'll say, you know, and then I found out that, you know, he was doing, oh, yeah, you know what, I'm not surprised. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm not surprised. Yeah, there's nothing new you're telling me. You're joking. Really? Oh my goodness. <gasps> You're joking. Oh my word, I can't believe that. <gasps> ah, I can imagine. I can just imagine his reaction when you told him that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Oh yes. Yeah, 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 right? I mean, and so then when it happened, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you're looking at them. What about... How odd, odd, how strange, really? How odd, wow, really, did that happen? What an odd reaction, oh, what a nightmare, really? Oh my God, nightmare, that is terrible. <gasps> oh, that sounds terrible, oh dear. Then you keep listening. Okay, you know, then you can choose how much of a reaction you give. Sometimes you don't want to overreact when people start thinking, oh, what, is, what is she doing? She's a bit exaggerating or he's exa exaggerating. But you can tone it down or you can tone it up depending on the situation and the scenario. That sounds awful. That sounds terrible. You know, so that sounds awful. That sounds terrible. Oh, wow, that was dreadful. I don't blame you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you did the right thing. I don't blame you. I would have felt the same if you had done that. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, that's amazing. That's just amazing. Wow, that was great. Now, um, some Americans like to say awesome. That was awesome. 
maybe I'm a bit too British English in terms of that. So I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, that was, I'd, so I'd just sort of say, oh, you know, that was amazing, that was great or whatever. Um, oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Oh, right. Okay. So I see what you mean. Yeah. Great. Uh, lucky you. Yeah. God, lucky you. Great. That's so great. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Oh, oh my God, really? Did that happen to you? Oh my God. If you want to be really dramatic. Were you really? Were you really in that situation? Or were you really at that conference? Oh, I didn't realize. Oh wow, that's so interesting. Um, so what happened? So what happened? Tell me more, I'm, I'm interested, I'm, I'm intrigued. You can't be serious. Yeah, John McEnroe, when he was playing tennis, you cannot be serious. Okay, well, not that high. He was getting angry, but you, you can't be serious, really? Is that what's happened? Oh, wow, that's really, oh, no, that that's, that's bad. No, I didn't realize that. Oh, wow, tell me more. Yeah, so lots of reactions that you can give to the storyteller. So the storyteller is telling you something, and then by reacting, you are encouraging them to tell you more. And then you're reacting. So a good story can get you really involved. And you think, wow, okay. And it will also make you remember things. If you think about who your great teachers were at school, the great teachers would have been people who were telling you stories. Stories of things that would capture your imagination. And that's exactly what we also want to do in business, don't we? We want to capture the imagination of our clients, of our customers, of our employees. We want to inspire them. We want them to act. So depending on what we're trying to do, then you're going to give that story. But you're also going to use those phrases to um, start that story. You know, so those little triggers, as I call them. Angeliki, sorry, I've been busy talking away. You're saying we could pass a message using it and making more educate, protecting the environment. So I'm not too sure what you mean by that. I quite often ask my students as a project to prepare a story because I know very well that this boosts their confidence and helps them with fluency. Yes, Angeliki. Angeliki is a fellow teacher and yeah, and everyone likes telling stories because um, we, we like to share our experiences. At the end of the day, as people, we are quite self-centered. Yeah, we like to tell our stories from our perspective and we like to do that. So, yes, and it helps us. And also when we tell a story in English, it, it, it helps you communicate what you mean. Also in, in business communication, sometimes when I say to my clients, they're trying to explain something to me and I'll say, well, give me an example. Give me a story. Give me an, and an example will be a story will be, for example, we had this situation with this client, and this is what happened, this is, you know, and, you know, this is what, and, and then they start telling me the story, and I think, great. And when they start telling the story, it's amazing how they find it easier to communicate, because the story is what they already have in their mind, and then they start communicating. it. Hi, Ted. Uh, so yeah, so that is, those are the expressions I have in terms of how to tell stories. So what could you do to, how to develop your storytelling? Um, one of the things, I don't know if some of you ever watch TED Talks, if you watch, um, you know, pick your, your, your favorite storytellers and look at what they say. It, this is in English, of course. And you you see how what structures they use you know some people when they when they start a story or before they start a presentation ted talks for example um have some very good examples of what how people start a story how they start they often start with a little anecdote an anecdote is a small story get telling them about your experience um so you know you'll say you know well they'll start with you know um some people just go and say, let me tell you a story. Or you go, well, this happened to me uh, three years ago. Or you could say, you know, I'll never forget the time I, um, or you could start, you know, I was in, in, um, in India and I was working in um, this, 
this uh, company and um, you know and and this happened and so you start a story because you're immediately captivating your audience's attention and but your story has to have a purpose what is your purpose what are you trying to do you're trying to introduce them to the purpose of your presentation so storytelling in business presentations is very powerful captivates your audience and makes them identify with you maybe you are trying to tell a story about yourself you're telling a story maybe you want to make other people realize that what you're you are similar to them and they are similar to you so for example when I tell my story on my website I tell a story of how I found it difficult to communicate in Italian when I had to use Italian in business why did I tell that story so I started with a story and I started with a sentence so I started with a phrase and I started my story so I said um, I want you to make a phone call to these clients and that immediately catches your attention you think, what you saying I go that was me three years ago this you know this was the scenario oh my goodness what was I going to do what was I going to happen you're thinking okay she's grabbed my attention what's she trying to tell me then you start developing a story so imagine this picture this 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 is me so or you can start even the story it's like I want you to imagine this a little boy in the middle of a field a little boy and so you start building that story and in business this is so powerful more than sitting there and trying to persuade your clients to do whatever or persuade you know you're asking them to put themselves in that situation so they identify with it so creating that story and all of us have a story to tell I'd love to know what your stories are what is the the best story you ever heard and how was it told why why did it why did it resonate with you why what did it what did it tell you why was it so important for you so you know have a look at what uh, at storytelling look at people's stories read in blogs read in articles listen to presenters special TED talks they when they will use stories to start a presentation because that helps you also looking at the phrases they use to start to work in the middle of that story to start continue with that story and to end the story and that will give you the confidence gradually as you build your storytelling because there's nothing better than sharing your story someone else's story um, in in any scenario in our lives I hope I've given you some some tips I uh, not even tips really just sharing the sort of ways you can tell a story in English and adapt it into your business scenarios and uh, it's such a powerful area as I keep saying to you and it's something that I hope you you take away I will be posting this um, this uh, post this lesson that I wrote um, about a, over a year ago with these phrases but don't just use these phrases add them maybe you listen to a story somewhere and you think oh I like that story uh, I like the way they use those expressions Put them into your bank of phrases in how you could start a story and try developing a story start start practicing as you're telling a story try and say it in English try and tell that story in English uh, and and that way you gain that confidence like Angeliki says with her students they love telling stories because that boosts your confidence particularly if you get a reaction from your audience from your listener whoever it is who's speaking to you that's why you want to use animation you want to use emotion in your voice you want to use your your body to to express how you feel so don't you know make sure you don't use it with a you know but then storytelling is always great because people bring in that that emotion that feeling the feeling of fear the feeling of happiness the feeling of satisfaction the feeling of difficulty we put it into our voices you don't have to have the perfect language but you can have it in the way you build that story with um, with your friends uh, your family and uh, your your clients 
Um, and so, you know, storytelling is, is, is a huge part. And I'd love you to share your stories with me, whether it's here on Facebook or drop me a line through my, my website, englishwithatwist.com. Um, that way we can share each other's stories. So thank you very much for listening into Lesson 36. So this was all about storytelling. As I said, I'll put down the, I'll put the notes and all these expressions that you can incorporate in your stories and share with me success stories that you've heard. And what, what are your favorite storytellers? Who are your favorite storytellers? Who have always inspired you to tell stories? And uh, happy storytelling. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this lesson, please share it with other people. And don't forget to join the EWOT community if you want more. Uh, this is me, Shanti Kumara Swami Street, saying ciao for now. And I hope you... Oh, Gabriella, you're just saying storytelling makes people see we share the same worries, difficulties as them. Yes, it makes us realize that we're not alone. It allows us to share each other. And we know that, you know, we're not the only ones suffering. That We're not the only ones in, you know, there are a lot of people in the same boat. Idiomatic expression. There are many people in the same boat. And we share, we have more things in common than we have differences. And, you know, the more stories you tell each other, even in cross-cultural uh, situations when you're dealing with different cultures in business you realize when they start telling you a story telling their story or telling a story about business you realize that we all share the same the same experiences and we're not that different from each other and that's why storytelling is so wonderful but thank you so much for listening thank you very much Akeko. thank you very much Angelique Genevieve oh I didn't know whether you were there, so great, Keiko, thank you so much for being there. Gabriela, Rosie, Roberto, everyone who's come in. Vasiliki, it was great to see you. Next week will be lesson 37. And I would love you all to do share with me any topics, any subjects you'd like me to raise and make a lesson of for English with uh, Wednesdays with the EWOD. Because the more you tell me what you want, then I can prepare a lesson and deliver it to you in the next time. So do feel free to write to me, whether it's on my email, shanti at englishwithatwist.com, through the website or on Facebook, and I will put together a lesson. So what are your difficulties, what you'd like to discuss, and we'll do it together. So I'm not always, you know, just thinking what to, to, to talk about. Thank you for your time. Happy learning, happy English, and happy storytelling. But don't forget to share your stories with me, okay? So this is Shanti Kumar Swami Street saying take care. And I will see you next week, which is August the 30th. Can you believe we're already at the end of August? It's frightening, frightening. Ciao for now, guys. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye.